No one likes to talk about money. Am I saving enough? Can I buy a house? Am I paying too much in taxes? Will I be able to retire? What if you could unlock insights about your finances in less than five minutes with a clear picture of where you stand today and where your money can work harder? Now you can. Visit facet.com to take the free quiz and get your financial wellness score today. That's F-A-C-E-T.com. This ad is sponsored by Facet. Facet Wealth Incorporated is an SEC-registered investment advisor. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities, nor is it investment, legal, or tax advice. You are listening to the Starter Girls Podcast with Jennifer Loading. Whether you are starting a project, starting a business, starting a brand, or starting a movement, we are here to talk about it. And the Starter Girls Show is brought to you by Walt Mills Photographer of Glad Models Agency. If you are in the Dallas or surrounding area and looking for some photography work, check out Walt Mills. You can learn more about him and his work at photosbywalt.com. All right, today's a great day to be brave. You might as well start now. You have the power to change your circumstances any day you decide. Let today be that day. Rise up, be amazing, be you, do you. All right, I am super excited. We have a guest in the studio today, and I'm always excited when I have guests in the studio. I love it when you are here. All right, and Miss Julie Van Orden, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you, and thanks for the invitation to be here. I love do you. Isn't that awesome? It is. That's great. Isn't that awesome? I, You know, that whole mantra that I put together, like I was driving in my car one day and I just kind of just put that whole thing together. So it's all, it's hashtag rise up, hashtag be amazing, hashtag be you, do you. Because I'm all about the be you, do you. All I about love it. it. So let me tell my guests a little bit about you guys. You're going to love this lady. Lots of good stuff that she's doing here. So Julie Van Orden is a trained communication skills facilitator and a trained domestic mediator. And I'm going to have you explain that in just a few minutes so our audience knows what that is. She's taught hundreds of communication skills training sessions. She's been a keynote speaker, a session leader, and a guest panelist for a multitude of state, local, and company-wide education sessions. She also co-hosted a local weekly cable television show for parenting called Quality Time. And she's an author. We're going to talk about that, all of this in just a bit. Julie holds a Master's of Health Administration degree and a Bachelor of Science degree in Health Science. She has several industry credential certificates, including Certified Wellness Practitioner, Certificate Worksite Wellness Program Manager, and Certificate Worksite Wellness Specialist. Those are lots of words. Julie also has faculty designation with the Wellness Council of America and has over 30 years of experience in the health and wellness industry. Knew I liked you. <laughs> We're talking health and wellness. You are speaking yes. my language. So yes. welcome to the show, Julie. We're super excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So what I want to do, because I was looking at this bio today, and I'm like, okay, trained communication skills facilitator and trained domestic moderator. Tell us what that is. Tell my audience what you do here. Okay. So um, the, the communication skills training that I did, I actually learned – after I got my um, both of my degrees, actually, I think, no, it was after my first, my uh, bachelor's degree, and it was teaching me how to facilitate groups for drug and alcohol uh, addiction and intervention services for the U.S. Navy. Um, I wasn't in the Navy. My husband actually uh, was, and he's retired from the Navy now, but I, uh, the University of Arizona held a contract with the Navy, and I overheard somebody talking during a cocktail party, and I said, I want a job like that, and so I asked a lot of information, and I got myself into that program. I got trained, which was the most intense training I've ever done, and I started being able to hold groups and do groups, and it transformed not just it, um, I was going to say it transformed me professionally. It kind of set my direction professionally, but it transformed me personally and the way I related to people. And also, I think it was really key in having a marriage that's lasted forever because, and I say forever, <laughs> my husband and I, I have been it. together for 40 years. Wow. We've been married for 35 years, oh but we've been together for 40 years. And I think a lot of it had to do with me um, learning how to be a better communicator because I was a pretty aggressive communicator. Yeah. yeah. Communication is, is important. And is. I think th this is so awesome because you're right. I think that so often that's the big barrier gap, you know, with people is they just, that communication is broken down and it affects it. it's in work environment, personal relationships. So 
That's awesome. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I love it. And then the mediator piece. Yeah. So that came later after I had my master's degree and I was working in my field, working in communities and health and, and community services. And I had an opportunity to go to a training for somebody who couldn't make the training that I, I think it was our director uh, at the, the, I worked mostly for government and, um, and, um, uh, like state and local yeah. community organizations. Okay. And so I um, I was a fill-in. And when I was there, I was like, oh, this is like an add-on to the communication skills. And so I paid for myself. They wouldn't pay for it. So I paid for myself to go through all of the training. And I became a domestic mediator for the court. And I had, it's crazy, of all the things, you know, I got this bachelor's degree, I got this master's degree, the thing that has re really been the go-to for people who wanted to hire me had to do with my communications and my mediation skills. Love it. And I had a judge who I had put in just a contract. I was working full time and I wanted to teach parenting classes for them because they they did family services and in the the proposal I gave him it had this piece on communication and he knew I was already a domestic like trained in for the state of, of Maryland you don't really get a certificate for, per state but it was a big deal for him and so he said I don't want you to do parenting I would like you to come in and I would like you to take cases that we cannot help their child their child um, custody cases and they can't come to an agreement okay um, separation agreements and all of that I'd love for you to teach them how to work in the best interest of the children teach them how to talk to each other oh I love it I did it for seven years oh my goodness and every day I mean I had I only had he had three days in the court that we did that I did it every day for three days and you know a couple to three two or three back-to-back -back cases and um, it was amazing working with family, and it never got old. And it's the same material, but every yeah. family's got different issues. I was just going to say that. It's probably very different. It's like coaching. I mean, anytime you're working with people, the stories, there's no one shoe fits all with people because they all bring different baggage to the table that you have, yeah. to, you have to work through. They all have different communication styles. We had a gal on here a couple weeks ago, Amelia I can't say her name, Amelia Antonetti. And she does this whole thing called the genius key, which is really, she's a human behavior expert. Awesome. So you're the communication. She studies human behavior. And it's like you, you two have the same, like almost the same goal, different pieces of that puzzle. But her whole thing is, you know, learning to, once you figure out the human behavior of a person, then you know how their other people are perceiving them. And now you know how you can behave when you come, you know, come forward. And so yes. this is so huge because I, this is part of, you know, like even when I'm working with people all the time, there's no, like, you know, I do a lot of coaching with people on mindset and it's not just, you know, people will call and they want to do like, okay, tell me how to eat right or how to do a marathon or how to be better at my career. Yeah, we can do all that. But at the end of the day, we're only hitting that surface. And then when you get in deeper, you start finding there's more stuff. There's these communication problems, these things they have with their family that are underlying things that start surfacing and they're they're kind of compounding and they're affecting everything they're doing. So you guys mm -hmm. all have this little piece, yeah. this little segment, you know, that that I think they're all interwoven. They, they go over each other, but when they're used can really benefit a person. In, yeah. all, in all areas. So I love that. So, um, okay. So this is awesome. So how, so backtrack us a little bit because you are in, you, you've got this health and wellness background. So where did, tell us a little bit about that, how, because all of this has kind of evolved for you up into where you are now. So kind of backtrack us a little bit. Yeah. So because my, um, husband, uh, was in the Navy, we moved around a little bit. Okay. And so I kind of had to reinvent myself everywhere I went, not reinvent who I was and what I did, but helping people to understand what I do. And and I, this, this communication skills that, training that I got was w right in the beginning. So I got to bring that to every community that I got to work with, every population. And I've always worked with vulnerable populations. And then I moved into working with corporations and doing corporate communication skills training and also corporate wellness overall. So it's really about culture okay. and people um, really building great relationships with each other and how do you do that. And it's by, you know, that behavior piece that you talk mm -hmm. about, which is a huge part of communication 100%. because people can't build trust if your behavior and your words are not matching. Mm -hmm. And then there's really 
skills that you have to use. So I had to, you know, I got an opportunity to work in the uh, substance abuse and addictions field, prevention there. I worked a lot with women and children's issues and uh, children who were uh, removed from the family because of abuse and neglect. So I got to help families learn to um, be better parents. And communication is no different whether you are working with children or whether you're working sure. with a CEO. It's the t content that is different. It is not the use of your skills. Your skills right. are going to be the same. So I got to do it that, uh, use my skills there and my education. I've worked in health and social services with aging populations, with populations with disabilities, and like I said, with just functional corporations uh, doing wellness. So I have really been blessed to have yeah. an opportunity to do a lot. I love this. And one of the things you said earlier that I think, I, and I may be wrong, I'm perceiving this, that you go after things. Like, I don't see you sitting back and waiting for these things to kind of fall into place. So, And I think that's great because it's given you the ability to put yourself in these opportunities and out there. And you've had this just this variety. You've been able to work with different populations and people. And so I think that's awesome. I love that. I, I'm sensing yeah. this. You just like you're a go getter. Like yes. you just go after things. And I like that because that's <laughs> the way I am. <laughs> I love it. So let me ask you this. So what is it you get to do today? What do we do? What do you do today with your clients? What What is this that you're doing with them now? And then what is the best part of this? What do you love about this? Um, well, I get to do what folks want me to do, what they need for me to do. Um, if it's to work with, a, like I, I got contacted because of my book, um, which we'll talk yes, about, we're talk when, about when you segue into that, but I got contacted by a pastor who uh, is putting, he's planting a, a, a church in Washington State, and I was on a podcast out of Washington State. I mean, of course, these podcasts are broadcast everywhere. Yes. Um, they're not, you know, when you have one, it's not, you know, just for that that area, it can go anywhere, but he happened to um, hear it there and picked up a copy of my book. And then he contacted me and asked me for some tools that people can do their health and wellness assessment and how might they be able to work that into their pods uh, or not their pods, their modules for their life groups. So uh -huh. yeah, it's so exciting. And I usually, now that's, I got to tell you, this part of my consulting life uh -huh was always, I mean, it wasn't always, it was a full-time job when I was in, on the East Coast in Maryland. But when I moved to Texas, I went back to working full-time and doing that on the side. Okay. So I, during the summer, very much like uh, the rest of the world, I got laid off from my regular corporate wellness uh, program management job. Mm -hmm. And so my side hustle turned full-time. Uh, yes. And um, so I'm. That's what I'm doing right now. Although I have a few other irons in the fire. You got some things out I've there. I've had a couple of uh, interests. Pe uh, interests in me doing full time, and I can do both. Yeah. Because I do have that drive, and also I'm an empty nester. My husband and I don't have any children in the home. We have isn't one that, child. Isn't and... that isn't that crazy? Like you know, th not to get off a topic here, but yeah. that's kind of where I'm. I mean, I've got two out of the house, and I've got my youngest in the house still, and. He doesn't really need me so much anymore. He's working a job now, which drives me crazy because I have to stay up to wait for him to get home every night. So I'm never sleeping. Like, I just don't get any sleep. But it's crazy because you go to that, that transition. It's like all of a sudden you have time now. You have a little bit of time to follow and do some of the things you want to do. And by the way, I can't tell my audience, or I'm going to say this to my audience. She has like the most awesome boots on right now. Like these amazing <laughs> boots. Almost like, Julie, I need you to hold these boots up. These are, gorgeous. this is a Western boot. I'm going to pull it pull off. It because, and because oh, I'm so my husband boots. calls these, because I like cowboy boots. My husband calls these my sissy boots. They are the cutest boots I, ever. Um, because they're, you know, color, covered with uh, I love them. sequin. I got them to go literally to a corporate Christmas party. I had a cocktail yeah. dress that was um, sequiny, sparkly, yeah. and I had to have my cowboy boots to go with These it. are too, so I'm eyeing them, I'm talking to you, and I'm looking at these boots, I'm like, these are the cutest boots ever. They like, were literally show... an afterthought. I was getting, just like um, the other thing I told you about before, I was getting ready to walk out the door, and I almost forgot. Um, I said, I was getting dressed, and I was going to put on this stuff, and I go, I haven't been able to really dress because of the quarantine. I'm going to put everything on that I want, and these sparkled so and much. I love them. I would totally <laughs> wear those. They're super cute, and they look great with your jeans. You got it going on Thank today. You. So Thank let's you. talk about your book real quick. And if okay. you want, let's hold this up. Look, we can hold this up really quick. So this is Julie's book. We'll let her, she could kind of showcase that really quick. Yes. And tell them a little bit about this book. What inspired you? Okay, so I am a, my my by profession, I am a wellness uh, professional, and 
what a lot of people who end up in wellness or a lot of people, they think about wellness, they think of diet and exercise, mm -hmm. right? right? And even a lot of people who end up in the wellness field, that's where they started because they fell in love with wellness because of maybe their diet or their right. nutrition or maybe their mental health journey. Uh, we usually think of mind, body, spirit, and that's as far mm -hmm. as it goes. But when you're getting a, a health promotion and prevention degree or any type of community health degree, you're usually using a model that's a multi-dimensional model of mm -hmm. wellness. My undergraduate program had one that was five dimensions. The National Wellness Institute, which I'm a member of, they use the six dimensional model. My favorite as a practitioner working with companies and working in the community was always the SAMHSA model. It was an eight dimensional model of wellness that included, and all of them include these things. They just usually chunk them into bigger chunks. That's okay. why you have a five or a six dimensional model. Well, this one had eight dimensions and I, I loved it so much, but there was a point where I was like, you know, I'm hearing these stories, I'm working with these people, and their journey to wellness isn't what um, I was taught and what I'm expecting because of the outreach and health education uh, that we're doing with folks. They're getting there in different ways, and it's very varied. It's very specific and individual to the person. And I thought, is any one of these is any one of these dimensions, and I'll mention what the eight are in a minute, more important than the other? And I wasn't sure until... I said, God nudged me. I uh, started to read the Bible for the first time in my okay. 50s. Okay. And I was not raised in a church, but I did. Uh, I always had, you know, the spiritual part yeah. of me. And then when I, my husband and I started dating in, um, in college, uh, we did go to church. And then I, we went to church always and we raised our daughter in church. But I had not read the Bible. And I tried, but, you know, starting and beginning is right. very hard. Right. So um, I got a little insight into reading it, starting with the New Testament instead of the Old Testament. And that was magic for me. And as I was reading the Bible, I started to have this, like, unbelievable, unbelievable epiphany that everything that I had learned in school, everything that I was teaching about wellness, communication, how to take care of your finances, how to take care of your body, um, how, what the importance of your friendships are, and your life's calling, your purpose, mm -hmm. was biblical. It was everything. Everything was in the Bible. And I'm like, that's when that nudge came and God said, I'm in the middle of all of this. I am the heart and the soul of your wellness. So I took the wellness model that I loved most, which was the eight dimensional model. Almost every credible version of models have a spiritual wellness piece. Right, right. Uh, but all of these are in equal standing on a pie chart. Okay. And I never questioned that until I started to kind of feel like maybe one was more important. And when I got this nudge and this epiphany, I moved God to the center and I put them all around each other, uh, all around the center. Now, uh, there are models that do touch each other because all sure. of them are interrelated, but right. I put them all it, that's where if, yeah, I'm you know, visual, with the book, I'm visualizing that model, it. <laughs> that, that logo yeah, is yeah. the model of okay. the wellness model yeah. with God at the heart. And so God, which is spiritual wellness, is in the center. And then the rest of them are physical wellness, financial wellness, mental wellness, environmental, occupational, intellectual, social and that should be it. <laughs> that should be it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the seven around and the eighth one is the middle one. And so if, and the reason that there's so many, you know, a lot of people are, that's an awful lot. Well, that's our total life right there. And right. what I was finding was that people would get a success in one, not by going after the tool, let's say diet and exercise. Right, okay. Right. Um, that's the physical part of wellness, right? Uh -huh. I knew a woman who was over 250 pounds. She never was concerned about her weight. She was comfortable with all of her curves, as she said. But her weight became a barrier when she wanted to go skydiving with her social group. That's okay, her right. social wellness. They wanted right. to go skydiving. And she went uh, looking for who could take us skydiving. Turns out there's a weight restriction. Mm. She wanted to go for her okay. 30th birthday. She was over 250 pounds. You had to be down to 250 pounds. So, you know, she contacted me. I, we were working in the same institution. I was their wellness manager. And she said, thank you for this tool. We're, you know, because one of our, our uh, promotions was this uh, diet program. And so I 
she she was already on her way. She had already started that journey and she contacted me to say, I'm so excited about this because I had plateaued and I got to get down by June. My birthday's in June. So she sent me these pictures of her skydiving. It was unbelievable. She, you know, she had the before and after pictures and it was all great. Well, her story didn't end there. So I met her about 11 months later and okay. I was in her building on other business. We worked in the same company, but not the same building. And I said, I'm going to go look Alexis up. Names are changed to protect the innocent. Sure. She's in my book. I tell this story. It's my favorite. And I met her and I'm like, she's not at all the person from the before and after pictures. And I'm like, Alexis, what happened? And she goes, I felt so good. I just kept going. Uh -huh. So she just, that was her entree. You know, right. two, two of us right. can go on the same journey, mm -hmm. but we're motivated different. So we mm -hmm. keep hearing what's your why. Mm -hmm. You have to sit with God and find out, you know, who am I? What's my purpose? Where's my strength? Right. And so that's what the book is about is it's a journey to each of the dimensions that I talk about in each of the chapters. It's a very fast read. Yeah. You're, looks... you're, you're creating a vision board and you're sitting with God at the inch, end of each of them just listening for, okay, these are the things I know about me. What does that mean? Because he mm -hmm. plants all of those stirrings in us, right, right. all of that he plants in us. So we need to follow his path to get there. I love this. There's some, well, and it's so interesting that you're saying all this too, because I talk a lot about this. I don't have the eight pieces, but I, they are all in there. They're just condensed because yes. I talk about four quadrants and I talk about that the health and the well-being always need to be the, the well-being that's the number one thing that needs to be worked on because people like you said so many things in this people will have the entryway maybe their health it may be that their finances plummeted their relationship there's an entryway but it's really this top piece over here that they've got to master because once they master that, all this other stuff starts Dominoes. falling. Dominoes. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. It is. You get into, exactly. You get your strength in one because mm -hmm. one of my strength, my, uh, one of the areas that if it's weak for me because mm -hmm. I'm, you might be able to tell I'm a bit of an extrovert. <laughs> um, and so the quarantine was was challenging yes, for me because right. of that. But when I am suffering in my social well-being because we moved around a lot so i had mm -hmm. to like recreate my friendship groups too right sure. um and uh, so anyway i was going to say that was also before a lot of that was before we were very social media con mm -hmm. and we had all those connections right um the first thing that goes for me is i start eating poorly right i stop exercising regularly and then i start to pick apart work that's uh -huh. one of the things that I have done is I'll start to pick apart. And I have worked. I've never worked at a place that was bad. Every, yeah. every you know, because there was one place that I worked there seven days and I knew that was bad. And I'm like, <laughs> I, yeah, this one isn't going to work. And all of these 30 years, I have always worked in great places. Yeah. And, but I could find anything to complain about when, sure. when well, one of those right. is unbalanced. When, right? when you're unhappy. That's yeah. what, so all yes. of those. So just as all of them can fall, uh -huh. you build one up. They can all stand right exactly. back up and you can become like thriving balance. I can completely understand what you're talking about. And it's so, I've, I've heard. Your yeah. And it's show. so hard yeah. to explain this to people because they, they come to you and I was trying to explain this the other day to somebody and they come to you because they want to fix this one thing. But the thing is we can, I tell them it's like a band aid. We can put the band aid on you, but that's only temporary. You're going to learn this little thing that you're going to get through a hack. You're going to get through a diet and exercise program. And in two weeks from now, you're going to be off it because I'm not nagging you about it. Right. But I want to teach you to be able to, to do that for longevity. And we've got to fix the well-being. We've got to fix the way you're looking at things and the headspace and where you are as a human being and find out why you're doing what you're doing. Because once we rattle and we get all that stuff cleared, then all this other stuff happens. The weight comes off without you really having to try that hard. Look how you, easy. Who loses weight because of skydiving? See? It was magic. See? Right? I'm telling you. I love that. It's it's cr And I have a and client. And I have a month, many of those stories. And, well, and I have them too. And I have a client right now I was talking to just about this weight thing because we were worried about that. And I got on the phone with her and, and it was a whole different... She'll probably hear this podcast at some point. No, I'm talking about her. But we got on the phone call and... Just I could just tell that where she was in this place, she had lost some weight. Wasn't I mean that was the focus in the very beginning was not the focus towards the end, but things were starting to line up. And I'm like, when you hear that, you know people are getting in alignment. Yeah, they're getting and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're moving in the right direction. I, Such a good I know feeling. you want to go somewhere, but I don't want to let everybody know that yes. this is not about diet and exercise. Right. It's also 100%. about finding your purpose 100%. because um, I thought. 
that when I first went to college, it wasn't to become right. a health professional. It was right. to become a journalist, a mm -hmm. broadcast journalist, because I wanted to talk to everybody. <laughs> and I wanted to I wanted to tell them the news. We have lots to talk but, about yes, and tell people, right? But um, God, uh, it, it, he had those stirrings in me for a reason. Yeah. But I didn't know what that was. And then I struggled when I was in college with my mental health. When I got that taken care of, I went back, I changed my major, I got this health degree. Do you know, nine years later, I'm working for a company and they go, we got a television show. And I got to be their regular expert. And then pretty soon the host, which was my director, didn't want to do it anymore. So I got to be her regular fill-in. So awesome. the stirrings that God put into me for my purpose really were there. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to drive the bus and go my way. But when I when he, you know, really gave me a, a moment in the valley where uh, allowed me a moment in the valley, I got to get right back on track. And so it's the same with your finances, with your friendship right. groups, with your hobbies and your special extra self. Yeah. All of that. Finance. It's a puzzle. Is a it is. It's what I tell and you. It's, it's not a an, puzzle. It's not an Easter egg hunt. Right. And it's not, <laughs> it's not trickery by God. Yeah. It's really faith yeah. and trust. Yeah. and surrender i yeah. love it it's it's a it's a process and i think everybody you know so I, I i get sad because i think some people never get figure that out like they never yeah. they go through life every day and, and i talk to them about this all the time that i feel like they just go through life every day and they never find that you really have to go on that journey you know you and for me it was a health thing it was a health crisis that forced me mm -hmm. to go through that and then and i didn't go through that while i was going through the health crisis because I, I had to heal myself right you know but i always tie everything back because i looked at my you know patterns in my life and recognized that i had all these patterns of thing crisis that just kind of kept happening that was just a really big one it was like I, I always say that's the one that threw me to my knees that said hey jennifer you need to wake up and you need to do something different you have a purpose here mm -hmm. you need to figure out what it is and you're going to find it you know and I and i joke that. about it because you know my journey really started 20 years ago november of 1999 that's when it really started but my big journey started you know between 2012 and the last like almost nine years so i, I do your think, pivot point exactly i talk about and i talk about pivots lots of pivots because we have those I moments so that. i love what you're doing julie i love oh, what you're doing you. before i move on really quick i want to ask you one question because i always like to ask either a mindset or a success question so in your words what does success mean to you? What is that? What what comes to mind when you think of success? Um, you mentioned ease, joy and ease. Um, success is not how much money is in my bank account. And it's not about, like, I've taken jobs that were going to pay me less because I knew they were the right fit. Um, so for me, success is that I feel like every day I want, I want to be right where I am. You know, love that. Yeah, you're at it's peace. really it's content that, and yes. joy. And um, yeah, I remember one time riding to the rodeo with my daughter. She was going to be racing barrels, and this was when we lived in California. And uh, we're just, all three of us sitting in the front of the pickup truck, pulled the horse trailer in the back. And I said to myself, "If I died right now, I'm happy." I love it because it's about, and I didn't want to die. Right, right. <laughs> it's just that I, I want to be able to have those moments that I feel like. Yeah, uh, I've I've accomplished um, contentment. I, I've achieved contentment and joy. It's a good place to be. Yeah, and yeah. I don't do it alone. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm all about. I'm a God girl, so it's all about. You know, and we don't have to do it alone. Yeah. There was a time when I thought I was the, driving the bus and no one was helping. And there's no maps no, or anything. It's all yeah. me. Yeah. I love that, Julie. I love it. Thank I love you. it. All right, so I want to do. You know, I do my fun rapid fire. Yes. We gotta have a little. I love not that. that you've not been fun. You've said some great stuff today. Like I said, I love your boots. You are. <laughs> you've got it all going on. I totally love it. But I got do a little fun at the end of this because that's that's just who I am. Okay, so when you're not wearing all these mini hats and doing all this stuff, what do you love to do for fun? I like to golf. I like to golf? Yes, I, I started golfing that. two years ago, and I, yeah. I'm not very good, let me just let you know, but I can hit the <laughs> ball. I figured when I'm not swinging in air, that means I'm doing something right. That's awesome. So I enjoy golf. That's so and awesome. And I have a little I have a little group of girls. There's four of us that love to golf. I go, golf with more than four. We have lots yeah. of them, but these four primary That's ladies. so awesome. Yeah. So awesome, Julie. All right, are you a morning or a night person? Morning. I am too. Mm, I've got I things you got to do in the morning. Yeah. yeah. I know. I always joke. I'm like... There's a lot you can do in the morning before noon. Like, you can slay the day and be done by lunch. You know, you <laughs> yeah, really can. Because there's not as many interruptions. <laughs> no, exactly. By afternoon, I'm like, okay, it's 2 o'clock. Now i got to sit down and take a break. I need some tea, and I'm going to cool it off here a little bit. Love it. All right. And um, are you a cat or dog person? Uh, I'm a cat person. Are you? Oh, my gosh. My cat has his own Instagram page. <laughs> Havana Cuba Gooding Jr., 
Look him up on Instagram. He's so very great. photogenic. And we also have a cat, Ricky. That's He's so a great. Maine Coon. But Havana, oh, we've always had cats. We have a Maine Coon. We have one Maine Coon. Ours is a mini Maine Coon. We call him a Texas Coon. Texas Coon. Texas because coon. Maine is M-A-I-N. Yeah. And a lot of people think it's Maine, like around right, here. But it's right. not. It's a state. Maine Coon. Well, ours is a Texas Coon. That's too cute. He's too cute. adorable. Well, we have Ricky. some cats, too. That's why I always ask that question. But we have dogs, yes. too. We got both. So I can go either way. I've I tried like dogs, and I admire them, and I want mm -hmm. one, but it's never worked. Out. I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, and they're kind of sometimes not good with cats. <laughs> I've got one right now that tries to eat the cat, so we have to like do this whole little like rotation system right now because the dog's like thinks the cat's a chew toy and she wants. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We have one of those lasers for the cat. Oh, this yes. is the craziest thing. The dog loves the laser more than the cats. Like I, I can like before bedtime, I do this like two to three minute like workout session for Wears the dog. Wears them out, right? Yeah, just get the laser. You get the laser and just let her run around the house, and she's good. She goes right to bed. So and then I Good come, girl. You know, it's the craziest thing ever. So, all right, what's your favorite food? I really love sushi. I love you know, sushi if too. I want comfort food, yeah. macaroni and cheese. I haven't had macaroni comfort. and cheese in forever, but I, I love, love sushi. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, and if you were on a, this is my favorite question. If you were on a dessert, one of my favorites. If you were on a deserted island and you had all your food, you have like your main stuff, like you can live, but what would be the one thing you'd have to have, the other one thing? A 4G connection for my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> so you can talk to a person, right? That way you got communication. I need a person. <laughs> yeah. You don't know how many times I ask that question and somebody will say that. It'll be like a person. Really? Yeah. yeah. I've had Bible. I've had person a couple times. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to think. We've had a couple different things. Notepads, like so people can write journal, write things, you yeah. know. So fun question. All right. And if you were, okay, if you were going to be any character or superhero for a day, what would you pick? Okay, so my daughter's into Comic-Con, okay. uh, and so she's all about the superheroes, and I've never been able to get into I like real-life superheroes, yeah. and I like, the, I like uh, men who um, catch the bad guys, and yeah. I would love to be a, a, a girl who catches the bad um, okay. Like Liam Neeson's character in Taken, yeah. uh, my daughter always says, if anything happened to me, you'd go full Liam Neeson on. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I would. Um, uh, I love uh, real, real, yeah. real life heroes, and I think like John Walsh, uh, okay. who uh, yeah. America's Most Wanted. Right. Who, I used to watch those yeah, shows. I, a lot. I yeah. love that because I, I don't like the bad guy winning. I love that I you, you said your daughter back. said that you'd go full. I could see my kids saying she that about that. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to go full Liam Neeson on me or something. Uh, yeah, the bad guy would be in trouble. That's so crazy. I love, it. I love it. That's a good one. And we've never had that one, so that was unique. <laughs> that was a unique one, right, Chris? We have not had that one yet. We've had all kinds of funny things on it, and that's why I like this question because I just like to see what people – and I always feel like the character kind of resonates with who the person is. Like it kind of – it's – a piece of them you know what I mean like if you think about it, it's like who's your favorite character like superhero like think about it we pick things yeah. that kind of align with this so Julie I love everything you're doing if our you. you know I, I think it's awesome what you've got going on if our audience wanted to learn a little bit more about you get your book all of that where do we send them wellwithgod.com you can order the book off of Amazon just by clicking on I have links on my website but I'd love for I'd love for your audience to also follow me on social yeah. media so if you just go on to wellwithgod.com and click contacts you can click on all the social media I think we've got some of it scrolling on the screen oh, for you yay. and we'll make sure to when this goes out that we tag yay. you and put it I, this stuff goes Thank like you. everywhere I've got like an account like all over the place anymore so I'm like I get so tired of putting social media stuff out there, but it is everywhere, so they can find it. We'll make sure we tag you, too. Good. So. Thank you so much. So this has been a lot of fun. Thank you I for know. sharing Thanks with for us. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I love what you're doing, and um, keep inspiring and Thank helping you. change the world. Thank you know, you. I would say it's one, watching. one person at a time, right? That's right. All right, and to our audience, of course, if you love our show, please be sure you give us a rating on iTunes, and we are also on iHeart and Amazon, and check our YouTube page out and hit the subscribe button. And with that, I'm going to leave you guys with with a final thought opportunity excuse me opportunity is always knocking the problem is that most people have the self-doubt station in their heads turned up way too loud to hear it and that is by brian vasili did i get that right hopefully all right you guys take care be safe and be kind to one another we'll see you next time